Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Lady Gang. I am Becca Tobin here with Jack Vanek and Kelty Knight. Hello. Hi. Kelty. Hello. Kelty's got a bow on. She means business. I love this bow. Look. Lady Gang bow. It's very cute. Coming to our store soon. Coming soon. I think it's so cute. Your hair looks very cute half up, half down. It does? Uh-huh. Yeah, it looks adorable. Mm-hmm. Thanks. You look like you're like a Reverting. 12-year-old girl. I'm Benjamin <laughs> Button. <laughs> Yes. I okay. Well, I don't want to waste any any time. I don't even really want to do this next segment. I want to get to the interview, but we'll do it because we love you, Lady Gang. It's yeah. time mm-hmm. for Good Week. Yes, it is. Bad Week. Oh, no. Okay. I'm starting because I don't want anybody to steal my Good Week that we have an icon on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> I got a text from Kelty a couple weeks ago saying, I know you were just in LA and I'm really sorry, but I just got us Sharon Stone. And I thought she was confused. I thought Mm -hmm. she meant Sharon was coming on E and so she had to like reschedule something. Mm -hmm. I had to read it like four times. And then I said, I'm not going to book my flight because I don't really believe that we're going to get her. Mm -hmm. So I'll wait till the last minute. So the good week is I did fly in <laughs> We're because here. Sharon came, she conquered, and she is – I don't think in all the time I lived in L.A. and, like, worked – barely worked in the business, I <laughs> had ever been around a movie star. I think there were people that maybe you would consider movie stars that were wonderful, and they. But you meet them, and you're like, "Oh, it's just a person." You know yeah. what I mean? You kind of mm-hmm. just get this, like, in a nice way, where you're like, "Oh, this is." They're this. just stars. They're just like exactly. Us. Where yeah. you have that moment, but with her, we just sat with her for two hours, mm-hmm. and I felt the entire time that she's like of another universe. Oh yeah, <laughs> she feels alien in the best way possible. I'm it's, like, how am I the same species as this beautiful? Also, she's the prettiest person I've ever seen in my entire life. So in my entire life, beautiful. I've never seen anything like it because it's not manufactured beauty. Mm-mm. It's true. This is how she came into the world and has stayed looking like this. And I just can't understand it. So that's a good week. The bad week was that I spent a small fortune to get here to sit across from Sharon Stone because I booked my flight like three days ago. <laughs> Worth it. And that, and also in a, a good week is the interview was amazing. So it was, it was a very good interview. What's crazy is that, and I have always tried to explain this to people because people always ask me about celebrities at dinner parties and stuff. When you meet someone who is truly a movie star, mm-hmm. it is a different energy yes. than a movie star. Yeah. Like I'm talking those top five, the Tom Cruise's, George Clooney's. Charlie's. Charlie's. Yeah. Like it's just, it's a different kind of quiet confidence. Mm. And mm-hmm. I I just loved how like, and she's so hot. So hot. Well, my mind. So hot. It's, yeah, it's kind of the thing where it's the it factor. You yep. cannot deny. It's the riz. It's the riz, what the kids say these yes. days. The riz? You, yeah, like charisma. charisma. Oh, the riz. But you have the riz. That's what they, oh, I that's want what the they riz. say. Yeah, I you don't, don't have no, it. I don't think I any of us have it. <laughs> no. <laughs> that's why we're, we're sitting Fantastic. here. <laughs> God damn it. Okay. Who's um, next? I love it. I'll go next. Um, so I recently went with my best friend to go try on wedding dresses, and it was just so great being on the other end. Mm-hmm. So less mm-hmm. stressful. But I have to say, after trying on 141 wedding dresses, I am now an expert. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I knew. I know my friend very well. I know her style. Yeah. And I'm like, I have an idea of like the dress that you want. We went to Loho Bride, which is where Becca got her dress. I've been a million times. I'm like, she's like, Likes a structural but mm-hmm. simple, uh-huh. but like looks like a piece of art. I'm like Vivian Westwood w- yes. is going to be your jam. Yeah, whatever. I had her try on some dresses there. Then we went to Kinsley James, and the guy that's working there is just kind of like picking out dresses. And I'm like, Kendra, try this dress on. I'm like, I have a feeling about this dress. She tried it on. It is her dress. She bought it on the spot. Wow. And I feel like. Maybe I need a career in doing this. A dress consultant. And a, 
and a success, success consultant. consultant. Do you no, want I work feel together? like I taught you so well because now did. you probably really understand. And you're like, oh, and then when you have the right underwear on and we pull the gro- gross gain in, it'll be amazing. You <laughs> no, know? I don't even know what that is. <laughs> it's the little part that goes inside if you, you didn't have one because your belly button was out. But oh, yeah, that's true. Like a little, you know. Okay. Um, no, but I just like, I just feel like I now have this like innate ability of choosing people's wedding dresses. And I feel like, I don't know, maybe that's I need. exciting. Yeah. Um, I don't really have a bad week, to be honest. <laughs> Who could? I can't. Life is so good. Life it was is just too good. Well, I guess my bad week, and I was. I also posted about um, my goodie bags that I gave to everybody at the yeah. at the wedding, and I had so many people being like, "You should start a business doing this. You should start a business." Doing I agree. Oh, and I'm like, maybe I should start a business, like a creative director for wedding business. However, I don't. Maybe my bad week is I don't know how I would do that. Well, the success pro- consultant. I could success. Con- we could do it as a, a an arm of lady gang because you need someone to keep it organized. Remember, well, we you had- need someone to keep the deadlines. Well, it's not even the deadlines. It's just like it literally took up. It was like having a second job. Well, that's- and I'm like, for this work, I would need a lot of money. Hmm. People have a lot of money. To justify no, it. I think you would need partners that kept you <laughs> yeah. on a timeline and yeah. forced you to make choices. Oh, yeah. but. Remember we did have a conversation with about Lady Gang where it was like the bridal package, yeah. the ba- bachelorette package. I'm glad we're throwing around ideas for businesses. I mean, this I think what we have to do is what we've been discussing for a long time is the Airbnb Lady yeah. Gang house. Yes. The more I've been saying this for years. We, yes, and I feel like this could all kind of fall under the same category because we could host Bachelor. right and then you could upgrade and, then, and you could get the keychain bag towel t-shirt oh, situation you could ooh. like pimp out their bachelorette yeah. experience because it's for people like us that like yes i want to throw you a bachelorette party but i don't have time to do this myself but i want it to be chic i want to be able to just all inclusive it <gasps> yeah you get the visors you get the matching onesies even whatever. the itinerary we could put together a oh great my God, itinerary easy. <gasps> wait this is our I new business this. venture wait we're wondering we sharon what? if she wants to do it too <laughs> <laughs> I think she's, she's busy. Say no. <laughs> okay. We're too like way too. I know she has the highbrow, lowbrow style, but we're like way too lowbrow for that. I, I did tell her. I was like, "Hey, normally, like, we'll be in our. I mean, I dressed a little bit because I wanted to wear my bow, I did. but I was like, hey, like, it's super casual. Like, Jack will be in her sweatpants. She probably won't be wearing makeup. And then, like, I saw Sharon in the lobby, and I was like, oh my god, her outfit's so amazing. But she that's probably her not dressing up. Outfit. Yeah, she, she's so cool. If you don't watch it on video, she had on like a distressed jean, the coolest chunkiest belt a white like very simple tank and a pink like bubblegum pink silk blazer but with rhinestones, rhinestones. All of it. it was amazing and then like and a the, big rhinestone necklace huge, that looked like what Anna Wintour wears and the biggest diamond ring I've ever seen ever huge ever. and then I really oh my god you guys would be so you know, proud of me what because I was sitting here at the end and I was like okay last thing can I try on your ring that's what I was gonna do and then you I stopped have. myself I but wanted to say something I wanted about to it. be normant I've decided that I she was wearing a there was another gemstone ring she had yeah, on. Yeah, the pink one. It was the pink one. And I was like, I think, I, I think I'm going to buy that for myself. A gemstone. That ring that she was wearing. <laughs> oh, do you know what I don't even from? know what kind of stone I'm going to find it. I bet I'll it's one it of a kind. They probably gave it to her when she hosted Amphar. Yeah. Like someone in a I'm yacht. I'm find it. It is, it is gorgeous. Like if I was a man, the amount of presents I would be sending to Sharon Stone to try <laughs> to get her to make out with me would be... Out of this world, or as a woman, the amount of Birkins, like she, but she's not. She's very artistic, so you can yeah. tell that she like she wouldn't want just a Gucci bag. No, she wants like a piece of Cartier history. But anyway, mm-hmm. okay, mm-hmm. all right. My good week. I have a new word, and it's what I'm doing right now. It's called cultivate. It's like you know when you <laughs> levitate. Oh yeah. Wait. I you, thought you meant cultivate. Yeah, me too. Oh, you're oh, cultivating. Maybe cultivating. Cultivating. I'm cultivating. Is- it's like it's like. What is it like? Like cultivating, cultivating. a vibe. Cultivating. Oh, I'm cultivating. I'm cultivating this interview. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you like it? Yeah. Did you think like cultivate is like you're elevating? Yeah, like I'm elevating. Like yeah. I'm on my cal- cultivate. You guys, it's another word that has double meaning. Wow, look We're at getting us. very We're intense with our words. So. I need to find one. Okay, so my bad week is I um, I recently, I'm so excited about it. I'm working with uh, the state of California mm-hmm. to do this thing about electric vehicles. And what I realized on Instagram is a lot of people hate electric vehicles. So oh. sorry about that. But anyway, so I have this thing and I was really excited <laughs> about it. Um, I think it's because they cost like a lot of energy to make. Right, but I run mine off my solar panels. Yeah. But anyway, I'm not getting it. This to is make. not, this is not that you can fight with me on my Instagram. 
Instagram. We're not fighting on Lady Gang about this. But what I'm saying is that I was really excited about it, and it's a company that I really adore, and I'm excited to be working with them. And so I'm doing this like little series, and I've been filming stuff. And I hired our old Elena, yeah. Elena from Lady Gang, who used to work for me and then worked for us. Yeah. She's now a big kind of like digital director and does all these things at Hearst. And so I said, hey, if I do this on the weekend, could you come produce it and, and film it for me? So we worked together, which has been like so, so fun. But my bad week is... I was like, oh, she was like trying to, she came early to the house to hook up the cameras and the car and stuff. And she crashed the car. <laughs> she crashed the car Ew. into, you know how my driveway is hell and there's that little yes. half wall. Yes. So she went up to my neighbors and then she, she meant to like come down and it was like, it's a car she's not used to, you yeah. know, and with electric cars, like they kind of drive like a stick shift where sometimes they roll a little bit more Ugh, than like a yeah. regular car. And she just, and I just heard crunch and I came out and she's like, please tell me it's not bad. Please tell me it's not bad. It's the whole bumper. No. I have to pay for it. I'm doing a deal with a brand, but like. They I, they were like you sign this thing when you borrow a car yeah once you have to pay to fix $4, it four thousand dollars oh no it's oh. like my whole fee. because you can't drive around with the f- top <laughs> no so I have to pay for or I put on my insurance but I don't want to get a ding in my insurance because over time that'll be more expensive you know yeah anyway I love Where you did you get your quote by the way what do you mean like to fix it oh they did it they do it yeah they do it and then I they're... just heard something very helpful that I think women need to know okay what? when you go to a car repair place you need to go to an international or a national chain oh and not like I know I'm like this is bad for, for the mom and pop stores not or like whatever. PD's right auto repair because there's like a yeah a universal pricing right. so it's the and same they can't in ding you. Ohio as it is in oh. LA as it is in Chicago as it is in Arkansas. Yeah. Yes. Wow. They can't just come up with a number out of thin air because you look stupid and yeah. whatever like a yep. dumb girl. You go to a huh. national chain. Good to we know. should get one of those on the sponsors. I can't even think of one off the top. I know of we need one. <laughs> America's tire? No, it's a tire place. Don't say it for free. Come on now. Yeah. Okay, when we come back, Sharon F- Stone is here. And we just wasted Woo! so much of your time. I'm so sorry. <laughs> The Lady Gang. Our guest today is New York Times bestselling off author, Nobel Peace Summit Award, Emmy Award, Golden Globe Award winning, and Academy Award nominated cultural icon and one of Hollywood's most captivating and enduring actresses. She was catapulted to international stardom with her you roles go, in Basic <laughs> Instinct and Casino, and her career has spanned several decades, demonstrating her staying power in this incredibly competitive world of, ho- of Hollywood. She's appeared on over the cover of over 300 magazines, including Ooh, Vogue. Wow. She was ranked one of 50 most beautiful people in the world by People Magazine. She's a fashion icon, making bold choices and inventing the style mantra that we all follow now, high-low dressing. Mm -hmm. Beyond her acting career, she's known for changing the world. I've now personally been to two different events where each night she raised millions of dollars for the causes she cares about, and she literally does this all day, every day. Her work on behalf of AIDS research and awareness literally changed the world as we know it. Her newest creative outlet is her art, which is quickly becoming a must-have for all the top collectors across the globe, and she's just coming off a sold-out show at the C. Parker Gallery in a collection called Sharon Stone, Welcome to my garden. She shares her life with her over 4 million Instagram followers, and I really want you to hear her talk because she's so amazing, but I could continue for another 20 minutes, but we don't have time. Her life is too iconic. Please welcome to the Lady Gang, Sharon f***ing Stone. Welcome. Nice job. Okay. So I would like you to follow me around and just tell she people will. about me. I will. So let me set the scene. So uh, one of Chris's clients ha- shares a stylist with Sharon Paris, who's fabulous. And so they knew each other. I'm going to get into that, how you guys met. But I now uh, we were at Amphar when Alicia played in France a couple years ago. But just a few weeks ago, um, we were at a, a, a wonderful charity event. And as the girls know, I don't like to leave the house. No. I don't like to be social. I don't like people. Mm-hmm. And I would rather be at home alone with a book. Um, and so, but we got invited. And so the, the beauty of looking across the room and I see someone interesting. <laughs> and I'm like, oh. And Chris is like, oh, look, it's Sharon. And then Chris and, and her know each other. And so they start talking. And I was like, it's just so nice to be at these Hollywood events. I'm talking like it's not Sharon Stone. but like It was the United Nations to, event, which it, was so nice. It was fantastic. Um, but then we just start talking about books. And I literally talked your ear off about books all night. And wow. I was like, she's just like me. She loves to read. So I feel like we should start a book club. But and read a Hollywood. <laughs> we could start a book club. You could. Oh, my God. We could. That would cry. I remember I went to a book club that I got invited to, and I said, 
I read this book, and it's kind of silly, but I think it's going to be a big hit. It's called Fifty Shades of Grey. No. no. And these women in Santa Monica was like, what's it about? And I told them, and they thought I was insane. <laughs> no. I said, it's very fluffy, but I have this feeling it's going to be a hit. Yeah, and there you are. And I never got invited back. <laughs> <laughs> and you're right. You're too right. You're Another too right. thing. Um, well, first of all, welcome to the Lady Gang. I, um, You're just... You're so incredible, and I just have to start with the vapid stuff that I really want to know about you, which is, where are the clothes? Where are the All iconic the outfits? Is you, there, like, a storage room? Where well, are the gowns? Where are really the dresses? it's really funny that you said, like, the, the 300 magazine covers because I just decided, well, because we're all consolidating, right? Mm-hmm. This Between COVID and the strike going on forever, we have to— you know, cut down on everything. So I went through my storage units and decided I had to take them all down into one. Yeah. And I found that piles of magazine <gasps> covers. And it was like, oh my God, I forgot I had done all these magazine covers. And what do I do with them? Right. So I also have boxes of costumes and clothes that I wore to particular things. Um, some of them I've given away and some of them, uh, well, like there were three of the dresses from the basic instinct interrogation scene. One I auctioned off a long, long time ago. One I gave to a museum and the one I wore for that scene Mm -hmm. is in my safe. (gasps) Yes. Great place to keep it. You Um, need it safe. Yeah, because I feel like. Um, I ask my kids, you know, because I'm also an art collector, which piece of art do you want? What do you want? And my one son said, I want that dress. Yes. <gasps> and so I put it in the safe. That's amazing. Um, because I do keep my costumes. And in the beginning, I um, people would, they would, the studios would put the clothes out and people could buy them at the end of shows. Yeah. And it was even the underwear that you wore. And I found it so offensive. <laughs> Not that the undies. That should be illegal. Just, and I found it so offensive that I put it in my contract that I wanted my clothes. Smart. Oh, that's smart. And people yeah. thought that I was very cheap and very tacky and very vulgar that I wanted my clothing and made fun of me. But ultimately, I have my costumes from wonderful films. Yeah. I have my costumes from Casino. I have my costumes from Basic Instinct. I have my costumes from when oh. Ellen and I did If These Walls Could Talk, and we changed the laws first in Vermont about same-sex marriages, and then we started being able to change mm-hmm. the law. And these things that helped my activism now become legendary pieces of garments. Right. Yeah. At that moment, you're like, there's no, you had no idea that it was going to be what it is and then have the staying power. Right. Does that bug you? So Becca, her background is she was on the show Glee, which is very popular. Do you remember Glee? Of course. Okay. So <laughs> Becca was one of the stars of Glee, which is this incredible popular thing. And her and all the rest of the Gleeks, we call them, it's like, it's this double-edged sword, right? Like you're known forever. She's Kitty Wild. She's Kitty Wild forever. People stop her in the airport. She can never live it down. It's the thing that every interview that we do as Lady Gang, it starts with a, when do you talk to the Glee people? It's the same thing right. as you. Right. Everyone wants to talk about basic instinct. Is right. it annoying? Do you care? Are you over it? Well, I think in the beginning, because it was such a powerful and such an impactful film, Mm -hmm. And because it was changing the way people dealt with women, Mm -hmm. people wanted to um, oppress me, put me down, make fun of me, make it as if I was somehow just like this sociopathic serial killer and that it was very easy to play the part and I didn't mean anything and I didn't mean anything. It was, um, it would have been easier if they could have made me small. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so people tried to make me small for quite some time. Even when I was nominated for Golden Globe, when they called my name, people laughed at me in the room. (gasps) And I had to kind of really hold my own self-respect for quite some time. It took maybe two decades before people started to treat me with any kind of, um, I would say, regard about what I had accomplished or that there was an accomplishment 
like a sociological accomplishment from that film. What is it about you that made you capable of staying in the business when you felt like you weren't receiving that kind of regard from peers? Or were you just... That's not why I did it Mm. to start with. And that's not why I fought for that part. Yeah. And I was the 13th person that they offered it to. Wow. They they wanted a big star. Mm -hmm. But big stars were afraid of that part. But I had a, a, a grasp of the part. Right. I understood the complexity of the part. And I think that there was a sort of glossiness of the film overall. And it was a big studio film mm-hmm. with Michael Douglas. And I think that, that um, it took, you know, it's hard to play villains. You mm-hmm. have to be, and when you play people that are like that, you have to be a deeply invested emotional person to play someone who appears not to be. Mm-hmm. And I think that people want to presume that you are your characters. Right. It's easier yeah. to do that to you. Um, and so you have to be aware of who you are mm-hmm. in order to... My dad used to say, no one is going to give you respect. You have to demand respect. And the word demand was really clear. Mm-hmm. And that's how he raised us. And my dad was a really tough guy. He was what's called a die sinker. He put blueprints on the top of steel blocks and cut car parts and gun parts and tank parts and machine parts into these steel blocks. So he picked steel blocks up all day long. Wow. And so he was really ripped. Mm -hmm. I mean, his forearms were the size of people's thighs. Mm -hmm. You know, so, you know, if someone gave him a hard time, he would turn around and pick them up by the neck. (laughs) You know, so I never had a name. I was Joe Stone's daughter. Uh And so, you know, I grew up with quite a bit of protection, I would say, Mm -hmm. and quite a bit of understanding that, I was meant to be my own person. That's mm-hmm. amazing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's- have you? Do you know the twelve other women that turned down the part? And have you yes. run into any of them? And they were like, "I shouldn't have turned down Can that you part." Share any of them? N- I wouldn't do that. Okay. I wouldn't do that because I've turned down parts right. that other women have played and played very well um, that weren't meant to be mine. I think that that you know when a part is meant to be yours. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I knew Casino was meant to be mine. And I auditioned a lot to get that part because, you know, it's a big deal to work with Scorsese and De Niro and Pesci and the whole group. And, you know, I really worked hard to get that part because I'm sure there were a lot of women that would have liked to have had that part, but I knew that part was mine. So when you were going through that and you're, you're, you're saying you had to work so hard to get that part, is that like... uh, 27 auditions, or is that like working the room, calling people, meeting them for lunch? For which, like, which film? For Casino. Um, well, at first, they were auditioning all the showgirls in Vegas. So I think in the beginning, they were just having fun. <laughs> <laughs> and I refused to go to those auditions because I knew that if I allowed myself to be a part of the playtime interviews Mm -hmm. that I wouldn't be respected. So Mm -hmm. again, it was the demanding respect. And then um, I was given an audition, and then the director didn't make the audition. And so then I felt like I was being played with. Right. And so then the next time he said that he was going to audition me, I didn't believe he was coming. Mm -hmm. And so I said I wasn't coming. (laughs) Amazing. And then I, and I went to dinner <laughs> because I just I felt like this. no I wasn't I wasn't a toy for this mm-hmm. game. Yes. Yes. And so um <laughs> he came and found me at dinner. <gasps> no way. And said I I apologize for what's been happening and I am serious and we really do want you to audition and please understand that we're not playing with you. Mm. Another, wow. like, that literally encapsulates demanding respect. Like, that yeah. story in itself is insane. Well, it meant so much to me that I had to make clear how much it really did mean to me, mm-hmm. that I was willing not to have it because it meant that much to me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That I respected them that much. Yeah. And I respected it that much. 
That's great. It's so That's great. Such a good story. Um, and I do. I respect them so much. I think and I've just seen Killers of the Flower Moon, and it's an, it? it's an oh, epic so masterpiece. Oh, oh my god, I want to see it. It's so bad. spectacular. And right. and the the actress in the lead is magical. She's the camera loves her. She's she's breathtaking. Well, and of course, Leo's in that movie. And Leo has, if you've read um, Sharon's book, The Beauty of Living Twice, Leo has like a fairy godmother in Hollywood, and it's you. Mm-hmm. I really believed in Leo, and I really continue to believe Didn't in Leo. Didn't you pay his salary or something? There's like a crazy story, right? Yeah, because, you know, when I was producing uh, The Quick and the Dead, the, the studio and the other producers didn't believe in the choices I was making. They, they thought that my choice of Sam Raimi was ridiculous. Why would I choose? They actually said, why are you choosing this D movie director? What are you doing? Wow. And then, of course, the next movie he did for them was Spider-Man, their mm-hmm. highest grossing film of all times. <laughs> and then when I wanted Leo... They didn't understand. And they said, if you want him so much, pay him out of your own salary. And I said, okay, I will. <sighs> and then when I wanted Russell Crowe, they said, how can you think that this kid who's only played a skinhead in an Australian movie mm-hmm. is the right guy? And I said, because he's the Richard Burton of his generation. Mm. Oh. He has this kind of savage masculinity. Yeah that we don't have here. Mm -hmm. Mm. And he has it in spades. He is the guy, and he's going to be a huge movie star. I promise you. And they said, well, we have to push for two weeks to get him. I said, then we push. And he was, they were so mad at me by the time we started production. And then I wanted Gene Hackman, and I wanted Gene Hackman to get top billing over me because... Of course, I respected his career, and they thought that was just lunacy because I was the flavor of the month at the time. And then I wanted to put modern music on this Western, and they just said, that's it, you're done. No one puts modern music on a period film. You're locked out of the editing room. Oh, my gosh. And I (laughs) had uh, Danny Elfman uh, to do it, and they were like, and you've got this guy. Uh, that makes no sense whatsoever. Oh. <laughs> but like, okay. Crazy. So, that is nuts. So there's like the, the motto, like what would Sharon do now, you know? But yes. And then you- I wanted to wear my leather pants. And they said, instead of a prairie dress. And they said, who do you think you are, Kate Moss? <gasps> oh. And I said, yeah, yeah, I think I'm Kate Moss. And and that's what I'm wearing. You have no qualms about like going against the grain and and like what? How do you? I mean, I I obviously the story about your dad it makes a lot of sense with the respect, but well, you. But also, how are you not hated? Because normally, when women well, stand think, up for themselves, they then you don't get another job ever. They decide you're difficult. Well, you're like, a bitch, you and may they notice have- that I don't have any jobs. <laughs> <laughs> I I had to pivot to writing and painting because I don't have any jobs but, because But it's not because of that. What it is. It, is. it really? is. So? Yes, my my agent, lawyer, and manager fired me all on the same day. <gasps> um and I was with the the you right, know the biggest the people and the opinion about me is that people say we're not interested in her fucking opinions. And they're not. But when I was gifted with you know, a intelligence and um, with emotion. And I think once I had, my ex-husband used to say I was like the princess and the pea. Mm-hmm. And I think once I had a stroke, I became more emotional. And I feel good about that, to mm-hmm. have even a greater access to my emotions. And I've chosen to be in relationship with spirit world. Mm-hmm. And it, or if you're scientific, I would say I have a relationship with the psychic field. Mm-hmm. And so however you look at it, mm-hmm. I have that relationship. And that's, I think, a high access place to be in. And that is very successful in an artistic world. But 
if you're a woman, that is very threatening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's easier to shut me down and throw me aside than it is to notice that the choices that I have made are all successful choices. And then I built my own little empire with those choices. And then it must feel very like warm or fulfilling to be having so much success with the art because, well, and the book was a huge success too, but like you can't hold a good girl down. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think you can hold anybody down that decides to pay attention to reality. Mm -hmm. I think if you, you know, it's like people who dis who thought, you know, cars, those are not going to happen. Mm -hmm. We're just going to stay with those horse and buggies. Mm -hmm. Airplanes, well, those people are that, those That's, Wright brothers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> those crazy <laughs> fools. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are they doing up in the sky? Is that us with AI right now? Yeah. <laughs> well, I think AI will never replace the human reality. Right. Yeah. But there are certain aspects yeah. of AI that will work, and there are certain aspects of robotics that will be greatly useful. They'll be um, surgically super Huge. beneficial. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we're not going to continue to use the same dental tools we've used since, you know, the beginning. We're not going to continue to use the same gynecological tools mm -hmm. we've used since, yeah, since <laughs> that group of 13 men practiced on black women right. and made them their horrific subjects. We're not going to do all of these things that we did in such arcane ways. But AI isn't going to replace human, mm -hmm. our human uh, gifts, mm -hmm. but it will replace technology as we know it today. Mm -hmm. It will expand our use of technology. And hopefully it will change some of the foolhardy choices that the government makes about, well, let's just blow that up. Right. You know, I mean, I think it will, it will be able to replace reactionary, um, foolish behavior. Mm -hmm. uh, and hopefully over time, it will replace so much violence. Yeah. Yeah, I hope so too. Um, I want to pivot a little bit. The the women who listen to this podcast, we have you know li women listeners all around the world, and one of the things that they like about us is that we're very honest about <laughs> stumbling through womanhood and the ugly and the hard and um, and you know I think we've been really having fun with uh, you know that I turn I'm 40s now. We were 30s when we started the podcast <laughs> and. I, 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 there was something that you said um, in this in this article, and I wanted to read the quote and just kind of get you to explain it more that I loved. And you were, um, this is the September 2015 issue. I can't remember what it was. You said at a certain uh, this uh, you posed nude for this. Oh, so in Vogue, Fair, Vogue, in Vogue, yeah. And you said... Um, that little magazine. That yeah. just little magazine. Whatever. <laughs> I don't know, you may have heard of it. Um, at a certain point, you start asking yourself, what really is sexy? It's not just the elevation of your boobs. It's being present and having fun and liking yourself enough to like the person that's with you. And I just love that. And I guess my question is, and then there was like another time, there was another article that you were just, just in, and you said, um, life doesn't always make you feel like a winner as you grow older. When I see you, I see and feel like the smartest, most beautiful, most epic woman I've ever seen in a room. How do you like yourself as you grow old and you get past the point of like being hot and being, f I mean, I still like to consider myself but you know, <laughs> let's be honest, like, like how do you do that gracefully and stay so confident in yourself when the entire ecosystem of the world is just set to make us feel like garbage. And to discard us. To in, discard us at a certain, at a certain age. age. I think I'm hotter now than I... You are. You I, are. Than <laughs> I, you than are. I, Confirmed. Than I have ever been. Um, I know that I am. And I think because now I see people who I'm attracted to, and I think about if I'd like to hold hands with them. Mm -hmm. 
I think, would I like to go to the movies and hold hands with them? And I think, if I was going to step off a dock and onto a boat, Mm -hmm. would I want them to be the person holding my hand? And would that make me feel the way, that really that way? Not, would I just want to have sex with them? Mm -hmm. Because... I mean, just wanting to have sex is something that's so easy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, you could just want to have sex like you just want to have a cup of coffee. I mean, just wanting to have sex is so easy. There's, You could see a guy crossing the street and think, I just want to have sex with him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I really just want him to go away. away. Sure, I'd like to have sex with seven people I saw on the way over here today. (laughs) If I'm honest. (laughs) If I'm honest, because... Right. Sure. I, you know, sex is awesome and I love to have sex. But in the end, it's the thing you get worth the thing you get. Mm. Ooh. And n- n- no. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yep. really, you're way too time consuming. You yeah. know, like, I don't want to have to talk to you and deal with you and take care of you and listen to all your bullshit and. And deal with you being aggravating and deal with your lies and deal with the fact that men have all these different standards that they believe are true for themselves, that Mm -hmm. they think are different for us, and and that they have no idea how we really are, and they speak their different language, and they think we don't speak it because they think it's a very sophisticated language. And and we've been speaking that language since we were taking care of our little brother's diapers. (laughs) So, like, you know, we get, like, that you're not— not going to the store we get you're going to f- someone else and come back we 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 know yeah, yeah, yeah like we know the door swings both ways guys mm. like we get that like there's someone coming over to our house too <laughs> like, <laughs> like hello you don't think like take a look like someone wants to f- us too like it's not a mm. mystery you know you're not the only one someone wants to sleep with like so is being sexy the the whole thing i think that what happens cuz i'm in my 60s is that like like people think like that no one looks at you anymore and the truth of the matter is i have just as many people who want to sleep with me now as mm. i ever mm. did mm-hmm. it's mm. just that there isn't that thing when you walk in the room that every guy goes, ooh, you know what I mean? Because you're not as easy as you were when you were young because you're much more discerning as you get older. And men recognize that you're not as easy, and that's why they don't look at you as much, and that's why they don't make such a big deal over you. It's not because you're not as hot. It's because you're not as easy. My you're not as easy like, to, oh, yeah. f- and you're not as easy to get rid of, and you're not as easy to keep quiet, and you're not as easy to go away. You're not as easy to dump afterwards. You're not as easy to be a side piece. You're not as easy. It's not that you're not as hot. You're hotter, hotter, mm. because you're much better in bed. You're much better of a friend you're much better to hang out with you're much better at everything because you're much more experienced yeah. you're much more interesting you're much you have much more life experience you're much better of being a companion you're much better you're more fun you're more relaxed you're less concerned about how's my hair how's mm-hmm. my do i look great you know you look great yeah you know you know what to do it's not because you're not as anything. It's just because you're not as easy. Oh, easy prey. Now I'm, I'm going to, you know, that's the thing that I've had such a reckoning with as I'm getting into just like the, the later part of my life, especially as an actress. You're like, I, I notice I pick up on energy so easily that the walking in the room phenomenon is over. Like it's, 22 year olds now and it isn't if you wanted to have it happen just turn that on Mm -hmm. and walk in a room yeah you just don't turn it on you're right you're right because you don't want that to happen it's true if you wanted it to happen get ready some evening like you want it to happen and walk in a room and believe me the person you're with will be frightened (laughs) (laughs) and you're in new mom land yeah that's true and you just haven't 
also the reckoning with of like you don't know who you are anymore. Becoming someone's mom. You're just not familiar with being a nurture protector with someone being more important than yourself. Yeah. Your heart has expanded so much you feel like you're going to blow up. Mm -hmm. That's what <laughs> loving someone more than you looks like. Yeah. It's just new because it's your first kid. Mm -hmm. Wait till you have a passel of children. <laughs> then you're like a tiger. Mm -hmm. Then someone comes into your zone and you're scanning them like, no, 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 no. What? What? What do you want? It's true. Back up when you talk to me. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And you're ferocious then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That has nothing to do with how beautiful or interesting or sexy you are. That has to do with what kind of protecting parent you are. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's so animalistic. It's strange. It's primal. Yeah. Yeah, it is. So primal. And Oof. that's very attractive. Yeah. I'm going to get there. Got to take off my cardigan. <laughs> You're going to have to take the cardigan off. Lose um, the cardigan. I love it. Believe me, I'm sitting across from you. You're stunning. That's the nicest thing I could ever hear from Sharon Stone, everyone. <laughs> take that clip and just play it anytime Forever. you're Thank up. you. Thank you very much. Well, no, I think with Sharon, sorry, and I know you're here, but like, I think you give women permission to be all of these things mm -hmm. and being in rooms with you and wa watching the way you hold space for yourself and others but there's always a like there's just a space for you and and obviously i think it's because you're one of the most famous women on the planet so people they don't know if they can come into your space but you're so confident and you're so calm and then i love that you're like well when i've seen you like you can be overdressed like you're not overdressed mm -hmm. but like you're dressed like yeah. you don't you don't you don't dumb yourself down in any way yeah. brains beauty brawn courage fashion and like you'll show up and I'm like because I just if I'm gonna leave the house for an event I also want to be overdressed I want to be in the sequence I want to be in the look I want to do the fashion but and you're it's also like, worried about being too much I'm, we are yeah, all, we're always, I am always worried about being too much too and much I, for who exactly <laughs> but like exactly but I think you give permission women for women to like just be whatever you want to be and if it's too much for, for someone whom? yeah exactly yeah, here's who the are thing you? There's always going to be people who, who when they mirror you, when they mirror themselves off you, mm -hmm. they're going to react positively, negatively, aggressively, competitively, kindly, compassionately, empathetically. Yeah. But it isn't about you. It's about the mirror that's coming right. when they get near you. And so some people are going to react in really great ways, in wonderful ways, and some people are going to be argumentative, um, competitive, uh, just mean. Some girls are just going to be mean girls. And some guys are going to feel like they're, they're, they can't talk to you. They can have sex with you, but they can't speak to you. Mm -hmm. Okay? They can hook up, mm -hmm. but they can't connect. And that's the difference between if you're hot or if you're available. And I think that when we're young, we think that someone hooking up with us is hot and sexy. As we get older, it's not that interesting because, uh, okay, you know, you want more and you, mm -hmm. you recognize that you are more and that unless there's more, like, I have things to do. <laughs> right. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm pretty good at sex without you. <laughs> Amen. Some would say better. Yeah. In some, <laughs> in some instances, most, you know? Most well, of yeah, the time. yeah. Right? It's and crazy. so until you meet and yeah. you've all met that person right. yeah. that is both your hot sexual person yeah. and the person that you know, I like holding hands with that person. Yeah. I kept going back to you, like I keep thinking about you saying that comment about holding hands because it is the most intimate thing, I think, to do with somebody. And it is the opposite yes. from having sex with somebody and trying to think about finding a partner for anybody that's single as somebody that you'd want to hold hands with. The way that you're saying that I think is just so poignant. Yeah. It's beautiful. Thanks for listening. Tune in next week for part two with Sharon. Sharon.